This video shows how to connect up your Astromex speed controller. Some of these parts may differ, but the principle will be the same. The setup shown is a 24 volt system. Here I'm using a 225 Sabretooth controller. It's an old one, but it checks out. I mark the wires and terminals from one to six this helps with identification later on. The power from your batteries connects the terminals B plus, B negative, or terminals three and four. Terminals M2A and M2B, one and two, and M1A and M1B, five and six, connect up with your motors. You can power your RC receiver via the saber tooth. Using standard servo leads, for this one I remove the white lead to help identify it as the power. The receiver signal is sent to the saber tooth via these terminals. Black negative goes to 0 volts, red positive goes to the 5 volts, one white wire goes to the motor controller S1 and the other one goes to S2. The white wires are the signal and can easily be swapped over if need be. The dip switches not only control the motors but also their directions and also the types of batteries that will be used in your system. Please refer to the instructions that came with your speed controller as these will show you which switches to dip. Switch 1 is for RC control and should be in the down position. Switch 4 should be in the up position as this is the mixed mode to control the motors. Switch 5 is also in the up position as this is a linear response to the control of the motor speeds. Assuming receiver and transmitter have already been bound, we connect the power servo lead from the controller to the first socket on the receiver. The following connections Channels 4 and 2 are for reference for my receiver transmitter and they control the forward reverse and the left and right. These are obviously connected to the S1 and S2 wires shown previously. These can of course be swapped over so that the transmitter operates the motors in the directions desired. Most transmitters right stick has a spring loaded mechanism so that it will always recenter itself. This means that when you release the stick, the droid will stop. The left stick we use for dome rotation. Setting up a dome motor follows the same principles as shown already. On the transmitter screen, it shows the pitch, the roll, and the throw. These relate to the terminals on the receiver.
in the next part we'll be connecting up the power to the speed controller and the speed controller to the motor for this first test we'll just be using the one connections terminals 5 and 6 Firstly, I'll be connecting up the positive and negative output from the speed controller to the positive and negative on the motor itself. There would of course be a main power switch between the batteries and the speed controller. So now I power up the transmitter and then connect up the battery to the speed controller. The receiver is flashing indicating that it has connection and on the speed controller itself there is a single blue LED light. This status LED indicates that everything is good. And now for the first test of the motor powered up. The transmitter receiver didn't like being so close together, so I had to move them apart and hold on to the motor as there is quite a kick. Bench testing is by far the best way to make sure that you have all the motors running in the right direction. And if there are any problems, they can easily be fixed by swapping over leads and or changing the settings on your transmitter. And here we have the two motors running simultaneously and in alternative directions. Hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching.